Today on the Anxiety Slayer podcast, Ananga and I are sharing tips from Ayurveda, India's ancient science of life, on how to calm your anxiety in the summer heat. Welcome back to another episode, Ananga. Hey, Shan. It's so good to be with you. And as we're speaking today, you are in the midst of some pretty sweltering summer heat. We are in the UK. We're having quite a stint of relentless heat. Having to make some adjustments to keep comfortable. And a lot of those adjustments are Ayurvedic, for which I'm very, very grateful for that information. And summer anxiety is different than the anxiety that we experience the the other seasons of the year. How so? The heat brings a different influence on our body and on our mind. When we heat up, we can feel a certain type of anxiety that's quite restless and often frustrated, frustrated, self-critical. That's what the heat brings. It brings up that fire, that pitta energy. And um, we have a tendency to do it to ourselves as well, to turn in on ourselves and be frustrated. Ayurveda teaches that we experience different types of anxiety according to our mind and body type or dosha, our setup, our mind-body setup. And I think it can be helpful to talk through those and and explore them a bit. It can lead to some good insights and some humor as well. (laughs) Humor for sure, as I think about my pit of self and how often I need to get my feet in the water during the summer. Yeah. It helps so much. But yeah, anxiety levels vary for each of us, depending on our dosha. And as we mentioned, can be influenced by the season. So during the summer when it's super hot, vata, pitta, and kapha all act a little bit differently. And vata is the dosha most associated with anxiety and can be feeling scattered, uh, can rush from one incomplete task or action to another, can be really forgetful, may forget to eat, skip meals, uh, turn up late and can become increasingly inattentive, unavailable, and again, just very scattered. Yeah. Butter has a little more tolerance for the heat because it's more of a cold body type, so they can tolerate a bit more, but they need to be careful not to just throw caution to the wind and stake out in the sun and forget to eat and forget to hydrate. They need their routine, their grounding routine. But... um. Vata anxiety tends to get spiked in the autumn season more than summer. So the next body type is the one we really need to watch out for in the heat. So true. Coming from a pitta dosha, I can tell you that in the summertime, I have to be really mindful of my own impatience. I have to be mindful of it all year round, but during the summer, it it flares up even more. The need to complete many tasks, the must get things done mindset, a driven to be efficient. And even sometimes Pitta people can be very competitive about what it is they're up to and will easily turn on themselves if they feel they're not achieving enough quickly enough. So there's there's that frustration, there's the impatience with self and others. There's where the perfectionism kicks in. It really feels to me like summer anxiety is pitta anxiety. Mm, Yeah, for sure. Because hot season, hot body type, so it exacerbates that, that fiery type. And it's a particular type of anxiety that really can come in on itself and start to feel very inefficient, out of control, frustrated. And it's a difficult season when the heat really comes up to feel like that because what we need to do is respond to the heat by slowing down, by cooling down. I have to do things very slowly when it's hot or I become um, quite confused and uh, very inefficient. So it's a challenge. It's a real challenge. And of course, Pitta always wants things to be efficient, functional, scheduled, the same, ticking over 
Uh, they're very quick when they're overheated to point out what others are doing that's inefficient. Uh, I see it every summer on the UK roads. You see these guys with their sunglasses and their shiny red bald heads, and they're just angry in their cars. The, the heat really affects them. That pitter kind of, you know, physiology that that really doesn't do well when you don't know how to sail through it peacefully. And uh, it's very easy to start picking at others, um, picking at ourselves. People get angry. Then the tendency in the summer is to try and enjoy yourself by staying up past 10 p.m. and adding alcohol to the mix is the worst thing you can do for elevated pitta. We need to go to bed cool and calm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And peaceful. When pitta's elevated and there's external heat as well as internal, they'll argue with anything. They'll argue with household appliances. (laughs) <laughs> and um, if they stay up late, they get hangry, they get hungry and angry, they have to eat again, and then they're going to get heartburn, you know, acid indigestion or something. It's a whole it's a whole thing. A whole package, which is very <laughs> difficult, difficult to live in and difficult to live with. <laughs> so um, lots we can do once we understand how that, how that works. And then there's kapha. And... The kapha dosha during the summertime is more low energy, fearful. There's inertia there. That there's a tendency for comfort eating, and also for more depression versus anxiety. For more feeling low and wanting to uh, hide out. Yeah. I mean, that's how kapha rolls anyway. Their their tendency is more um, towards inertia and low energy, low mood, comfort eating. Again, kapha's a cold body type, so sometimes they can get a bit of a break with the heat of the summer. They have um, more tolerance for the heat than pitta that's already fiery. I know somebody that's kapha vata, jewel dosha, and they just can't get enough heat. They're a very cold body type, and they can really tolerate the heat, and they become quite energized by it. So different body types, and it's important for us to learn our different nature, our different type, and and how to work well with it. So kapha can get a bit of a break in the summer. Um, They can suffer more in the winter and the spring. But again, you need to be careful to move gently at the cooler times of day and not to suffer too much from inertia. Uh, Keep the mind uplifted and engaged so they're not feeling low. But it's the pitta fiery type that's really going to experience that more summer type of uh, mental frustration and anxiety. And for all of the doshas, it's important to keep hydrated this time of year. Coconut water is a wonderful choice, both to drink coconut water and as well as to use coconut oil on your skin if you want to switch from sesame oil or if you, there's a different oil that you use in the winter. Coconut oil is nice and cooling. And then watermelon is one of the best fruits that you can have during the summer to stay hydrated. And it's tasty and it's so good for you. And you can make different smoothies with it or just, you know, chunk it up and eat it. It's really, really good for your body. Yeah, a real remedy for heat. In Ayurvedic medicine, one of the remedies for burns or sunburn is to rub the rind of watermelon on the skin. So cooling. So yeah, have some knowledge about seasonally what's what's good. We don't need too much ice because it impairs our digestion. It's quite shocking to the stomach. We always go immediately for the you know the iced drinks. It's too much. So coconut water, mint tea. Um, we'll come on in a minute to talk about cooling teas. But yeah, gentle. Hydration, consistent hydration. And it's very easy to forget how much we need to drink when it's hot, but we don't want to drown our digestive system out with too much cold. I like to just keep a mason jar full of spring water near me. I just like to have it there so that I can see it and it reminds me to stay hydrated. And I've had really good success with that, just keeping one full, keeping a glass full and around. And you know, doing the same thing with tea or whatever else I might be drinking, but mostly spring water is in the summer visible and something that I'm sipping on all day long. 
Yeah, and that's really the Ayurvedic recommendation is that we sip regularly, not that we're taking big glasses of iced water. Um, I have a copper flask that I keep by me. I think it holds a litre. So I uh, fill that up first thing in the morning and have that by me to remind me. And it, and it keeps the water cool, not cold, but it's pleasantly cool. Mm-hmm. You know, lid on it, so it keeps it clean and that works for me. Yeah, whatever works, whatever works to just, just remind us to keep, keep sipping something. And if we're feeling anxious, we can add rescue remedy to our water for some extra support. I added some natural calm to my water this morning because I woke up just feeling a little a little twitchy <laughs> and was really grateful to to have that option and to remember how helpful and supportive just a, a teaspoon is with with a glass of water. So natural calm's the magnesium supplement. Yes. Yes, thank you. Yeah, in the heat we can be perspiring more and we're losing more trace minerals from the body, so sometimes we need we need that extra support. This is also the time of year to avoid hot and spicy, pungent foods. We want to stick away from things that are oily, salty, citrusy, or sour. We want to stay away from caffeine and alcohol as much as possible. For the reasons that you mentioned earlier, alcohol is like pouring gas on a fire, for, especially for pitta people. And you taught me, Ananga, that in India, alcohol is referred to as a hot drink because of its fiery nature and effect. Yeah. So this is one, one of the reasons why if you can replace your alcohol with something else, it would probably be a good idea. When it's already very hot in our environment, we need to apply gentle opposites. If we want to have a peaceful experience, um, that's something we need to weigh up. And you also want to keep your diet very light and very cool and simple during the summer months. This is when a simple plate of rice and vegetables is a good idea. Uh, coriander is a, a good spice for this time of year. This is when we want to really enjoy the sweet, juicy, cooling fruits that are available to us, like red grapes and melons and mangoes. Right now in Traverse City, all of the wonderful cherries are available that we grow here. The sweet cherries, we had so many of them last night. They were so yummy. <laughs> this, is the, you know, this is the time to enjoy them and to just remember to keep your diet light and cool. Yeah, we don't need to be eating such heavy meals. In the winter, we can eat more heavy meals. So we've got that metabolic energy to keep us warm. We don't need that in the summer. We're warm enough so we can eat more lightly. And nice to take advantage of seasonal. Local is always best if we possibly can. Sometimes I'm concerned that my contents of my fridge have racked up more air miles than I ever will in this lifetime. I find that really quite concerning. I'm always looking for more local, organic produce and would dearly love to grow more of my own as well. But look for what's seasonal zucchinis, summer squashes. Summer greens, Ayurveda teaches that the property of greens available changes according to the season. In the winter, they're slightly heating, the sort of greens that are seasonal in the winter. And in the summer, they're slightly cooling, which I think is just such a beautiful reflection, such a beautiful gift from, from nature to, to think on that. So yeah, juicy, fresh, simple, good opportunity to uh, really take care of our digestion and our nutrition and uh, lighten up, lighten up our diet a bit. And then there's our favorite cooling teas. When you want to have a little bit more than your coconut water or spring water. And right now my garden is overflowing with, with mint, sp both spearmint and peppermint. Uh, I know that you love fennel tea. I love rose tea. Coriander is also a good one. These are all really cooling teas and they taste so good. Yeah, really soothing. My daughter loves jasmine green tea in the summer. I think she has some jasmine and rose at the moment that she's, she's trying. I just treated myself this morning to some more green tea with Moroccan mint. Mint's really good. It helps 
keep the heat out of the stomach that can lead to increased acid or acid indigestion. Mint and fennel, very good for that. Yeah, rose is just wonderful, very supportive to the heart, very cooling to the emotions. Saffron also, good for the heart, good for anxiety. Nice, gentle, cooling teas. I just made some rose and frankincense uh, spray to spray on my face. Mm. Every year I, I do that with the roses in my garden. And this year, since the chickens next door ate all of the rose buds, my pitta can really get going about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I found some beautiful roses that I could use to make it. Anyway, similar, similar style, beautiful fragrance. And then just uh, let them sit in the window in some spring water when it was really hot for a couple of days. And then strain that out and add a, a couple of drops of Frankie. And then put it in a spray bottle and keep it in the refrigerator. And it feels so nice to spray that. And you can, of course, buy that. But there's places that will. But I like to make my own. Yeah, it's so nice to make your own things. Are you going to spray the chickens? <laughs> no, I just kind of gave them the middle finger and told them to stay away from my roses. But <laughs> You know, it's very funny that you should mention the middle finger. There's an Ayurvedic joke that the middle finger is the fire finger. No way. Each um, digit is related to an element, and the middle finger is the fire finger. That's so funny. It has a tendency to manifest more in the summer months when the heat's up. That's, uh, there's an uh, MP in the UK that just got called out by the press for showing her fire finger. Oh, my gosh. I love that. Coming out of a meeting, and, of course, they all snapped it on camera and, you know. Anyway, and she's saying she should have shown more control. It's like, there you go. The pitta came out in the sun. There it is. There's the five finger. And now she's like, I should have shown more restraint because pitta likes to be, um, what's the word? They, they like to be courteous. Pitta likes to be courteous and do things properly. But, you know, every so often that fire just peaks and they lose it a little bit. So, yeah, middle finger's the fire finger. That's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the, the cooling attitudes that we can practice during summer months. Yeah, this is an Ayurvedic practice known as behavioral rasayan. Rasayan means like a tonic. So there are herbs that are rasayans and there are behaviors, lifestyle choices that serve us so well. They're, they have that same name in Ayurveda, which means like a, a tonic practice. So Ayurveda recommends that we're careful in the heat to be kind to ourselves and to others, that we avoid getting competitive, definitely a pitta trait to compete, and that just increases the fire further. So to avoid getting competitive, to be more playful, more lighthearted, to just bring that lightness, be mindful of our emotional triggers and respond to them with kindness and, and some space and some cooling where needed. Um, to avoid intense discussion or arguments, no matter how enticing and compelling they may seem, they're just going to put petrol on the fire. And again, look for the humor in things. Pitta types can be incredibly funny and observant and playful. And that's really where we need to go in the summer to uh, take some cool showers, use some nice scents like rose and lavender, as we've already shared, and really just step back and, and look for the humor, look for the levity and let the heat pass as calmly and coolly as we can. And there's nothing quite like the ability to laugh at yourself yeah. and not take yourself too seriously. What a gift. Yeah. And Pitta can do it incredibly well. Pitta types can be extremely funny. They're intelligent and they have excellent observational powers. Pitta lives also in the eyes. There's a a fire of vision and taking in information in the eye. It's called a lochika pitta. It's a sub-quality of pitta, a fire of perception. That's the word I was looking for. So, you know, pitta sees everything. They're super observant and they can have really great observational humor. And if we can turn that not on ourselves, but to ourselves um, and just bring a little levity, pittas can be very, very funny and let off some steam in that way. After this short break, we'll share a cooling breathing practice. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. 
taking care of your mind is more important than you can possibly imagine. How we care for our minds affects how we experience life. So it's really, really important to invest time and care into keeping your mind healthy. There are many ways to support a healthy brain, whether that be crossword puzzles, learning a new language, making time for power naps, and of course, there's better help online therapy. Sometimes therapy is actually one of the healthiest things that you can do for your mind. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat therapy sessions. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Our listeners get 10% off at betterhelp.com slash slayer. That's betterhelp.com slash slayer. Today we want to share a cooling and calming breathing practice with you that is perfect for the summertime heat. Ayurveda and yoga both share a collection of breathing practices for health and peace of mind. And one of these practices is especially helpful for cooling the body and calming your nerves. And it's called Sitali. Sitali is recommended in the summer months for cooling heat in the body and in the mind, calming anxiety, reducing anger and frustration. And it also helps relieve fatigue from the heat. So this is the perfect breathing practice for this time of year. How do we how do we practice this, Ananga? This is an interesting breathing practice because we need to do something that's actually uh, genetically hereditary. Not everyone can do this, so we'll give an alternative if you're not able to do this. You form your lips into an O shape, so your lips are like pursed and slightly open. And then stick your tongue out slightly and curl the sides of your tongue up like your tongue's becoming a a tube or a straw. And some of us can do it, (laughs) but not everyone can. Apparently, it's a a genetic thing. I'm really grateful that we're not on video right now. (laughs) Yeah, me too. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely. So um, you just curl the sides of your tongue up and then breathe slowly as if your tongue's like a bit of a straw. And then As the breath comes in, it cools the tongue, cools the sides of the tongue, and cools your mouth, and consequently cools your your blood. And then you close your mouth and breathe out through your nose, and then breathe in again through your your tongue. You know, dogs pant, different living beings have different ways of of cooling down, using breathing, using that kind of thing. So this is a, a yogic way for us to do it. If you can't curl your tongue up, you can um Just put the tip of your tongue behind your top teeth, as if you're saying the letter L, and breathe in through your slightly open teeth, and then just let the air go over the base of the tongue. And just breathe in really slowly and feel that cooling effect. It's very calming, very good for calming the heat down in the body, but it also calms the nerves as well. And I can see, I've done both, uh, and I can see how they both are, are quite cooling. So not to worry if you can't curl your tongue up. Yeah, just to allow that cool air to come in and breathe out through your nose and do that for a couple of minutes. You can do it a few times a day for a couple of minutes to feel calm. It's really helpful in the heat to stop the heat accumulating. Sometimes we might need to take an extra cool shower or do this breathing practice a little extra, take the steps and measures we need to stop the heat building and building in the body so that we can feel more calm and able to do what we need to do. And if you can, do it with a friend because then you can add humor to the cooling breath as well. (laughs) Plenty of humor with that one, yeah. And we can't talk about summer without inviting you all to spend time in nature. It's such a beautiful time of year. And I realize that moving your body at at the high point, a high heat point of the day is not ideal. But if you can move your body early in the morning or in the evening after dinner, anytime it's cool or cooler during the time of of the day that you can get out is is better. That's what you want to look for. The heat of the midday pitta peaks at noon. It peaks again at midnight. Another good reason to be resting 
by midnight. So yeah, take advantage of the of the early morning. I'm walking before breakfast, really early in the morning at the moment, and again later in the evening because it's challenging. We don't want to move in the heat. We'll say, oh, it's just too hot. It's too hot to move. But also we don't want inertia because inertia really affects our mind and really affects our anxiety. So pick those cooler, cooler spells of the day. And if you can, get yourself to a body of water, whether it be a stream or a lake or a pool. And even if you just get your feet in, it is such it makes such a big difference. I mean, swimming is even better. If you can if you can go swimming, do it. But if but if you can, if you just get your feet in the water, it makes such a difference. It's I'm so grateful to be close to Lake Michigan and to be able to do that whenever I feel like I need to cool down. Yeah. Or if we don't have that uh, facility, we can take a cooling shower or a cooling bath with some lavender oil, um, maybe make an oat bag and run it under the tap so that we're naturally having that kapha energy of oats, very soothing, very smooth and moisturizing to the body, a nice cool oat bath or a salt bath with some um, lavender oil and just allow ourselves to, to sit, not too cold, but pleasantly tepid so that we can cool our blood down. And that's also a place you can do a guided relaxation or some breathing practice. And on the day that we're recording, it's, it's the full moon. Uh, this episode will come out two days after today. So we'll still be in that full moon window. And that it's a good time to stand outside under the moonlight and just take in the beauty of the moon and take some deep cleansing breaths. Feet on the ground, face up to the moon. Yeah, moon bathing, stretching, breathing, it's that cooling moonlight, the opposite energy to the sun to help us balance out. Yeah, great to take that opportunity. And we also invite you to take mindful breaks in the summertime that will help you kind of step out of that cycle of rushing and doing and to-do lists, which create worry sometimes, which can easily get you into a flare-up of anxiety. Carve out time to breathe. Carve out time to rest. Even a 15-minute break. I've noticed a, just taking a, a half an hour in between projects or clients to get up, to get outside, to get grounded, or to get to the water if I can. Whatever it is to, to help me just take a little, a little bit of a break because of that fiery pitta mind. Uh, if you if you have that going on, it will really make a difference for you. Yeah, and if we can see it as an investment rather than a, you know, stepping down from productivity, to understand that we'll function better when we do take those breaks and when we stop the heat just building and building, that we can gain some clarity and come back with with increased efficiency, but kindly, not making it a, a big a big thing. And if we have the luxury of adjusting our work schedule to um, work earlier in the morning when it's still cool or best not to work late into the evening because that can elevate pitta. But we might choose to start earlier in the day or just schedule our day that we can have cool off breaks and then get back to work and just see what we need to do to work with what's happening rather than trying to push through it. Well, I think we've covered quite a bit today in our quest to calm anxiety in the heat of summer. We really, really appreciate you listening in. And we did want to let you know that we just surpassed our 10 millionth download. Quite a milestone for us and you make it possible. Thank you so much for listening to Anxiety Slayer and making us one of the top resources for anxiety relief. If you love our podcast, please share it with a friend. And be sure to visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash anxiety slayer if you want to support our show and receive over 100 downloads with regular weekly patron updates. Thanks again for listening.